So hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new again Car Care Podcast. This is episode 4 and uh, this week's topic we will be covering cabriolet and convertible car roofs. Um, but before we start we have our regular in-house expert Gary Ray. Now Gary's been involved in the uh, industry for all, almost 30 years or probably over 30 years looking at him from where I'm sitting and he's fully versed in all areas of car care and uh, he's going to share his wealth of knowledge when it comes to cabriolet uh, roofs and convertible roofs and how to clean and repair them. So hello Gary how are you doing welcome to the podcast as per usual how's things my friend? Uh, yeah very good thank you um, yeah all good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Busy? Uh, we're ticking over. I mean, you know, um, we're reasonably busy. Um, you know, this time of year, we probably would have been a bit busier, but, you know, not unhappy. We're certainly in a, a lot better position than a lot of other businesses. Uh, we're allowed to be open in this situation. And, uh, you know, uh, but not everybody's travelling and not everybody's having, uh, you know, there's a lot of things on hold, you know, there's yeah. a lot of people dealing and doing things they have to do, and we do a lot of business, uh, water leak finding and fixing cars that have water getting in them. Um, the Cabriolet Hood subject does fall into that area to some degree because we do get a lot of calls from people saying there's water getting in the cars, and they think it's the roof, and often it is, but it's not always the case. Yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously, if you're getting water in your car, then it becomes more important. But Which we know, did cover in our water leaks episode. We've I done think. that. Yeah, done. Yeah. So, if, ladies and gentlemen, if you are do have water in your car, you might want to go and listen to that podcast in particular where... Uh, yeah, Gary, so, uh, so, if you, so that's a valid point. Yeah, if you've got a roof and you're thinking it's leaking, um, that I can add something to this, really, because... Sometimes people put their hands on the roof and think the water's coming through the roof, and very rarely it actually is. Um, what's really going on is the, the car's condensating and you've got the water on the windows and also it's going on the roof. Uh, some cars got lining, of course, so you're feeling the lining inside, so you won't feel the actual roof. Um, but sometimes you can feel a bit of water in there and you feel it on the lining and you can actually get your hand in between it if you open the door and look at the side you can pull it back a bit and put your hand in there but most of the time the water's condensate in there because the carpet's wet so just in case anyone's here because they're thinking the water's going through the roof uh, we'll cover it in a little bit later in the podcast about uh, how water gets into cars um, and uh, what to do and how to manage your roof but uh, you know, if you're in, if you're in doubt and you're not quite sure whether your roof's uh, wet on the inside like your screen, um, then I'd fill your carpets because <laughs> that's probably the place the water's coming from. It's your heart, your car becomes a bit like a greenhouse, like a little ecosystem. It certainly does, and now uh, you get all water everywhere. So yeah. yeah. So well, let's go well, well, before we uh, crack on. Let's we'll cover the uh, the questions or areas and topics that we're gonna. Yeah, uh, doing this podcast. So the first uh, first area, which is is really, is how to look after your roof and how to clean it. Uh, then we're going to move on to why you should clean and look after it, and is it waterproof? Uh, and then we'll move on to what to do if your roof is very dirty. Uh, how to find a company if you don't have the tools or the facilities to do that. Um, and also cleaning the rubbers and uh, the, the the drains. And also we'll be covering uh, recolouring your roof. And what uh, about doing my roof if it's a different colour? How would you how would you do and address that issue? Uh, and why people replace roofs and how that actually happens? And then we'll do some do's and don'ts after. Maybe talking about jet washing and also the chemicals that are involved. Oh, so okay, okay yeah. so yeah. so uh, that's what we've got lined up for you, Gary. So we'll, I suppose we will track back to uh, the first uh, um, area, which is how you know how do you look after your roof and clean it and. I suppose really that's a good place to start. So, would you like to just uh, divulge your <laughs> level of expertise to the listeners and uh, and uh, disclose that information to them? Okay. So, um, most cars when they're brand new, um, you know, the roof has been made in the factory and uh, it all looks fluffy and new. It's not until two or three years down the line that you realise the roof is actually collecting dust and dirt. 
Um, I think most people don't think about it, which you wouldn't, but, you know, you're driving along with a fabric on the roof of the car, and, of course, little bits of dust and dirt gets into that fabric, and slowly over time, it's collecting that. If you're parking it un under trees or, you know, we all know if you park your car next to a, a road... Uh, that in the summer you'll get it smothered in dust and you think oh it's all dusty but of course you rinse it off the roof and it's not rinsing it off the roof the same way as it's coming off the bonnet the roof is you know uh, semi-porous certainly on the surface so over time it starts to build up dirt and then what tends to happen is that uh, you start to look at what was a black roof or a blue roof and then it starts to look bleached or black goes to what looks like grey um, and mainly the reason for that is that it's got dirt in it it's not actually fading you, you know like you I don't know we've all got um, black jeans that have gone grey and we've all got um, you know polo tops that have were black and then they've gone grey and a, a lot of people think that it's gone grey because it's like the polo shirt um, and it's gone grey because it's fading and it's older but most of the time the fading and what you think is fading is just really the fact that the roof's collecting dirt and actually the roof is still black or still is you know all the other colours so we're talking about the green occasionally you get and the blues and that they're not bleach really they're just effectively a dirty fabric you know like a I suppose if you wore your polo shirt on a dusty, dirty day and then it looks dirty, you wash it and then it becomes clean. But what's happening on the polo shirt is the colours coming out of it slowly. So most of you listening now will be thinking that their roof's looking a bit tired and looking like um, like it needs recolouring. And uh, the reality is it, it's unlikely that it does it's more likely that it's just very dirty, a lot dirtier than you actually think it is. So how do you maintain it and keep it clean and look after it? Well, you know, um, first off, it will need a very good clean. Um, let's just go back to those guys who've just got a car, it's a year old, and you want to look after that from the beginning. Um, and it's it's not that bad, but the, you know I can tell you that most people you'll be listening to yourself will be one of the people that it, the roof is that bad. It is looking a bit green and dirty, and it's probably springtime now when you finally realised, or you're looking at a wet roof and a wet interior and wondering whether or not the roof's letting in water. Um, for those of you, um, the one in ten of you that's listening that's actually got a really nice roof and you want to polish the car and keep the car in good order and you want to do something with the roof, uh, then I would suggest uh, one or two companies out there that make great kits for DIY. Uh, we know a great British company, Autoglim. Um, they do a kit. Uh, we've used it in the past. Um, it's got comes with a cleaner and a sponge and uh, it comes with a reprofer, which is a spray on water based product. Um, and it's really good. Uh, Renovo, another great British company that only really specialise in the roofs. They've got a couple of other sort of bits that they do, but the, you know they've mainly centred their business around the roofs, and they make some fantastic products. Again, designed around looking after your roof. They do a cleaner and they do a reproofing product. Um, so uh, that again's water based, so it's it's customer friendly. Um, to use one of those kits fairly easy, um, you would get your hose pipe out, wet the roof down, wash the car generally so that you're not leaning over grit and dirt on the paintwork. Uh, make sure you haven't got any zips and buckles because obviously you're going to be leaning over to the bit that you can hardly reach. For those of you who are five foot six and below, then you might need something to stand on. But anyone who's anywhere between <coughs> five foot six and six foot you'll probably need something, you know, make sure that you haven't got zips and bits if you're reaching the middle. And you, you get the kit out and follow the instructions. The, you know, basically uh, the the sponges that they supply are very good. They've got a little bit of a great a brush, abrasion to them. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> you know, you can start, start with the soap and sponge them clean. Even though the roof might look clean, you'll still see that some dirt will come out of it. Um, and then you dry it. Um, you can get a towel, a uh, microfiber towel, one of those big ones, or even a bath towel. Once you've rinsed it, give it a good rinse. Obviously. Which brings me into the next question, is, that, is it waterproof? Um, okay, so 
99% of them are made in the factory with neoprene. So basically, it has a lump of rubber underneath that fabric. You think it's, um, you know, you think it's fabric like a tent. You know, the tents. You remember, you know, you, you, they did a spray waterproof, and you think it's like um, a woven fabric with a waterproof on it. But the reality is, 99% of them these days are like more like a wetsuit, which yeah. is you've got the neoprene, and then it's compressed with fabric on the outside mohair whatever you want to call it but um so the reality is yes normally they are uh, there's one or two exceptions out there uh, i think the audi tts the early ones they do let a little bit of water through the fabric because it's more like the old design tent one so uh, a reproofing product like the renova one is very good you can give it a good clean and put that on an autoglim one is very similar and it creates like um, a water barrier, if you like, a bit yeah, like a um, shield, the... like Gore-Tex, you know. So that will create a bit of a waterproof barrier. So if you clean it properly and then dry it, one or two of them tell you it doesn't matter if it's too dry. But I don't agree with that. I think you need to make sure it's completely dry. And sometimes they come in with a trigger spray. Uh, it's a good idea to get yourself a giant paintbrush, you know, like a five-inch, four-inch brush tape up the metal bits so those of you guys are trade that are listening you have the metal bits around the brush where it holds the brushes together if you get some black tape or it looks better with black but you know tape that up so that there's no way that if it if you had it on its side it could mark anything or it would slid down the roof by mistake it's not going to mark the paintwork or anything just the the brushes are just going to you know not going to do anything but that metal bit might so tape all that up and what we do is use a trigger spray in one hand and the brush in the other so you can squirt it on and brush it in but you know that's after it's been cleaned properly so we'll get to that we've got on our subject the next subject there is about cleaning it and cleaning it when it's really dirty yeah um okay so uh 90 of you guys are going to be looking and and uh, when I say guys, I'm talking about girls as well. There are guys plen- and girls. Plenty of girls out there that like cars. We see a lot of them at our place now, and it's quite, you know, it's good. It, you know, it's girls and guys, but I call guys. You know, anyway. So ninety percent of you, yourself a you there, guys. of you people, <laughs> <laughs> you cabriolet hood cleaners. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's put you in that category. You you dirty roof people. Um, yeah, so I've got a really dirty roof. So they're, you know, they're looking at a roof that's, you know, looking at, uh, around the back window area where the water runs off the glass. All around that bit is all greeny. Sometimes there'll even be people there where it's really bad. You know, you've well, got they've left it under a tree, for willow example, tree or something. Yeah. yeah so uh, they're roofs that you know you're going to have to put a lot of work into to get them clean quite surprising how much actually so any of you professionals out there will probably know but I can tell you from experience that you give it a real good clean and you really really give it a good scrubbing and your elbows are killing you and you've really really worked on it and you're probably uh, on a dirty roof you're nowhere you're probably not even 25% in you remove the 80 20 rule applies for this so in other words 80% of the dirt will come off with 20% of the effort it's the remaining 20% of the dirt that's it still takes in 80% there. of the effort yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so you know so you think I'm making progress look at all the dirt that's coming off and you know you think I'll be done by lunchtime you know this is all well uh, but don't worry dear I'll be in for lunch you know yeah. just let me give this yeah. roof a clean five I'll, more minutes I'll show <laughs> I'll show these I'll show these yeah. professionals how to save a few quid yeah. I'll do it myself you know yeah. Charlie up the road paid a lot of money and I'll do it we can have a weekend in Walton yeah well <laughs> oh, don't worry I'll have a, well I can tell you now that you might be thinking you're making progress but once you've once you've rinsed it off and you need to dry it to see that it's clean and the reality is when you're looking at it and it's dry you'll see that you've got a lot more to go even we do it we clean them and then we then let them dry before we make that decision that they're clean we you often have to go back and clean them and you may even have to do that two or three times depending on how old the car is and how it hasn't been cleaned and if you're looking and at how it, dirty it is obviously. well yeah, yeah but, i imagine over yeah, a period of time it builds up layers and so yeah yeah you know. but but also if it's never been cleaned properly and deep cleaned properly it could even look semi-clean and it's like, I don't know, a car maybe eight years old. And you think, oh, mine's not that bad. Well, actually, you yours isn't that bad because somebody's cleaned it 80% and somebody else before that cleaned it 80%. But that 20% that's still in there is 
pretty been it's been in there a lot of years it's pretty ground in you know you, a good measure if you want to know if it's really really clean is if it suddenly looks like it's the right color like the color it was when it was uh when it was new that's when you actually know really and when you can't see any dirt from any angle if you get the sunlight on it you'll see that you've, you've cleaned it all you think oh that's not bad if you stand around this side it still looks a bit dirty that's because the sun is shining through the grain of it and you can see the dirt you go around the other side you're looking at it, it looks lovely that's because you're looking at the color and the shadows are in the in the in the holes do you see what i mean yeah. so you know you, you so kidding yourself it's clean when it's not is not a good idea because that's when people go on with the colour and that's where it all starts to go, go wrong. wrong. Yeah, so, so it was a good measure of knowing when it's cleaned. It was a good measure to know if you are doing it yourself, actually, when you say, do you know what? That's clean. That's clean. Yeah. Um, right, okay. So I'll let you into a couple of little secrets. Okay, so you clean it all, you really give it a good going over and then rinse it all and then you do it again. Um and then you do it again. So uh, three or four, maybe five times is probably a good idea. But when the, the last time you're cleaning it, you've got your suds on there and they are white and clean. You need to get in the gutter areas, right? So that most roofs have got gutters, believe it or not, they're down so that water doesn't run straight in the door. So you need to get in those stitched areas and sometimes a nail brush or even a, a toothbrush can get in those gaps. So you need to get, when you, and also when you, the front part, you can lift up a bit um, you know, unclip it and then the automatic ones, you just lift it up an inch and you need to get right along that leading edge. And whilst you're doing it, you might as well do the rubbers. So you might as well get your brush in there and clean them and get a microfiber cloth and clean them right along that rubber without dripping it all over your dashboard. But you can do it as long as you're brushing it with soap and you haven't got a big bucket of soapy water and hose pipe at that point. What you're doing is you've got the brush with the soap. I'm talking about um, Cabrolet cleaners, but you know there are some interior cleaning products that are designed to clean fabric. You can use those yep. uh, as long as they're professional products and you'll see out on the market there's plenty out there. But you use it with your brush and if you really, you know, if you've got a complete white interior and you're worried, then you can put a towel over the dashboard and a towel over your seats. But if you, you know, if you, if it's not that dirty and you're going across that leading edge, you can brush it with a little nail brush and clean that right along there and then wipe it. And look at what you're doing. Wipe it with your microfiber. Have another look. See if you've got in all the grain and the grooves, shall we say, of, of the, uh, of all the, um, rubbers that butt against each other so that bear in mind that you're next week you're going to be driving at 70 miles an hour in the pouring rain and that rain's going to hit that screen and it's hitting that little butting point and that's the bit that clamps up and that's where any dirt and grit and everything you might have washed into that or that's built up in there is is going to is stop it making a proper seal and you know loads of people that have had cars that convertibles over the years will tell you that they've also got water ab having dripped on their knees or on their heads or anywhere it shouldn't go so that you know that's a nudge that's a, a piece where they the, the two plate two rubbers nudge together and that also is worth cleaning so okay so you've cleaned it so you asked me that question how do you know it's clean so now the the number five you've scrubbed it you cleaned it you clean the bits in all the gaps you've got your nail brush you've done all around there and you've cleaned the big areas now the area to focus on is the bit you can't bloody reach because that's the bit that probably has never really been done properly everybody seems to clean the bit that's two feet from you or a foot a foot in and then it's the other foot that's the bit that they don't get to very well like the centre of the circle <laughs> yeah the five foot six people yeah. probably in all honesty probably anyone who's six foot six does that bit really well and then the bit down below they're the bit that's the bit they don't do but you don't get many six foot six people with cabrolets most of the time you know they're probably the average height and so it's the, where they reach and where your elbow when it's it's maximum torque if you like, and the power is when it's just about a foot away from you, not when it's two feet in the middle of that screen, in the middle of that roof. So you need to focus on that and also the dirty bits below the glass. Okay, so then you rinse it, you give it a good rinse. You can use a jet washer. Um, what I recommend is hold the handle in your hand and then hold your other hand on the nozzle. Not, not, Don't allow it to jet onto your hand, but you can hold it around the cowling so that you've got full control. So if somebody turns the power off, 
then your jet wash is not suddenly going to jerk forward because you've got one hand in one end of the lance and the other hand on the actual on the lance so you've got control and also you need to be staying right, roughly about uh, anywhere between six and ten inches away and no closer than that really I mean you might see a bit of bird's muck or something and something you can't get off and be tempted to go a bit close what you've got to do is carry on with the procedure do the whole roof rinse it all off get the dirt out of it see it all run out of it and that bit that you thought you were going to go close you need to get back to that with a bit of squirt, squirty stuff and a nail brush and give that bit a clean because what people tend to do they tend to get further and uh, further you know they get the gun goes close and then further away i see it all the time people are jet washing and then as they're standing there as they swing from the left to the right they're like a, a pendulum so as they go to the middle bit the gun's at the closest and then they go to the next as they're swiveling then the, they've got two feet and then a, the nine inches and then two feet again a bit like the same people that drive through stock i live in stock and they go like 40 miles an hour all the way through the bit where you can do 50 and then they go 40 miles an hour all the way through the 30 where you should be doing 30 and billericke now has gone down to 20 which makes more sense because you've got people you know all around the place and same as the village and the same thing this is a great thing you bring well, it's, a little in mode. it's a little mode. i just sort of add that in <laughs> So all of those you're just doing faulty yeah. everywhere. Anyway, you're the, you're, you're the same people that are jet washing and then staying the same distance from the thing as you swing your yeah. gun. What you've actually got to do is adjust your body accordingly, is what I'm saying. So yeah. if you move with the with the wand up and down the car, you're not getting closer and further away. You're not going to put zigzags in it. The zigzags, by the way, can sometimes be zigz zigzags in the dirt. And I see this, people come back from, you know, where they got it jet washed from our friends that run the jet washing places, you know, and they clean it. And they and they, they give the roof a good jet washing the same way as they drive through the village. They get the things closer and further, closer and further. And then they create marks. Now, those marks can be just uh, uh, marks in the dirt, but we also see them where... They've dug into the fabric, and you know if you want to know how powerful water is when it's jetting, if you put your hand a little bit closer to the jet, you'll feel as you get it closer. It gets very sharp, and if you get too close, it will cut your hand. So depending on the jet washer, but of course, you know even a small one. And I don't recommend you try this, but you know what I mean. If you get a rubber mat on the floor and you want to jet wash that, if you get it very close, you can try it on the turn the mat over and do a little bit in the corner, and you'll see that you'll mark the mat, and that's because the jet of the water is cutting into the into the rubber and the same thing's happening on your neoprene roof so you can use your jet washer but don't go too close uh, and it's quite a good machine to work with but and, but it doesn't do the work it does the rinsing so think of it that way what you really got to do is your work is your scrubbing and your cleaning by the way for those of you uh, professional guys are thinking of investing in it we use electric brushes so um you know they they still do a, need a lot of work you still have to get the cable over your shoulder plug it in with a trip out thing and make sure you're all safe um but and uh, but you then electrically the brush vibrates and turns at the same time and it, even with one of those a dirty roof can take a lot of work you know yeah. a lot of work you know to to get the dirt out so what would you suggest then if you're what if you're looking for uh, a company that would specialize or would be able to do your roof uh and you don't you don't have the tools you don't have the jet wash you don't have the the the, the, the brushes you don't have the soap you don't have the time yeah, you yeah. actually don't want to do it at all yeah. uh, and you want to take it as, uh, and right, go and get yourself hard top roof then. exactly yeah uh, so um, what would or, you're you know, looking or for you, a firm that or, might be yeah to do exactly it for you, you. Know, we don't even have the facility to do it how would you go about it and what's the best way to go around it um, okay so I would find a, you get through the you know there, there's i'm sure you can find them on google there are piece places that do it other than we obviously do it but you know we're in the southeast people are all over the country all over the world wondering what to do um you, you need to uh talk to people that do it um most of the time uh you want to know how long they've been doing it and read the reviews um there's a couple of do's and don'ts when you're looking and asking um ask them the question do they use the color uh, and if they say yeah 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 we can colour it for you 
Uh, I would usually recommend running a mile at that point. We'll cover the colour bit uh, a little bit later. So there's nothing wrong with the colour, it's just when you use it. And, you know, most of the time, to be honest, uh, you know, we'll cover that a bit further along. Um, yeah, so you need a company that, that knows what they're doing, ask them what they use, do a bit of diligence, really. Um, yeah, maybe look at reviews online and see if yeah, other people's experiences have, have given them a good have given them a good response or or even if you know somebody that's got a cabriolet ask them because they might yeah, have found somebody ask about well. there's Facebook um, you know they've got all these medias um, if you're not sure and you know I'm talking about you guys now that are standing thinking oh there's a car around the corner I'll run up and see what they say um, I wouldn't do that I certainly wouldn't pull up at one of these places where there's loads of guys and, you know, they're not unreally, you know, may not yeah. even um, be able to interpret what you're saying. And they yeah, 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 we'll give it clean gear. Yeah, well, no, it's, just, it's just like a factory line, isn't it? You don't yeah. really want that. No, so you need somebody who's... Uh, a specialist. A detailing good. shop is, you know, they call it detailing now in the UK. It's it's what we used to call valeting. Now it's detailing. So, a detailing shop that knows what products to use and knows what to do, and that maybe they've got a couple of videos on the website showing what they do and how they do it, and then you know, and then slowly fill your ground with them. Talk to them. Yeah. What do you do? How does it work? If you've you know, if you've seen lots of videos and what they do, and they know what they're doing, then you know they've got some good reviews. Then. You know, then you're in their hands. Just uh, out of interest, uh, have you got any videos on your website regarding we have. the lens? So, yeah, you, we so have, they yeah. can go to your website at newagain.co.uk and look, and look for yeah. videos. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, the, there's loads of videos on roofs and all of that, do's and don'ts and stuff on there about. Yeah. So for anybody stuff. listening um, and you're not sure, um, then you can go and have a look at uh, the videos on Gary's website uh, for any hints and tips on what to do. Yeah. Okay. So where so, were we? Well, uh, so we, we talked about cleaning the rubbers and the drains. I don't know if you want to go that to that little bit more. Detail. Oh, the rubber bits wanna... at the front, of course, one part. Then you go around the edges. You can tilt the roof and clean the rubbers. So uh, what you need to do there, sometimes it will tell you in the manual, there's a sort of resting position. So a roof, you can't just lift the roof halfway uh, with your electrics and then stop. You have to take it to a cleaning point. Um, so you might want to read your manual or, or look on YouTube. Sometimes they'll tell you. But what you need to, what you want to be doing is cleaning the rubbers. So again, your scrubbing brush and your microfiber clean the rubbers, um, which are butting up. So when you see it fold out, that most cars have got this big, um, like a, a, a boomerang shaped piece of metal that lifts and then or vinyl sometimes it's covered vinyl uh, sorry me the metal's covered in vinyl but it lifts up and then your roof goes into that and then that comes down but there's rubbers around that and obviously on the bottom edge of your roof once it comes down there's rubber there so once you i suppose ideally if somebody else gets in the car you can say stop you know and they move it and then you, i'll clean this bit and then you move it accordingly to clean the rubbers and then uh, uh, once you've cleaned the rubbers and you've done all the roof and it's all dry, um, there are products out there specifically designed to condition those rubbers. Um, the ones we like are more like a gel, almost solventy based. Um, the water-based ones are out there, they're okay, but we prefer the gel ones. They're the more expensive, the gel ones. Um, from want of a name, uh, Crytox is one that is used for the VW range. Again, none of you, you know, those people that own VWs probably wouldn't even know, but obviously VW make a product for that. And, um, you know, it's it's designed around um, the rubbers to condition them, make them plump up and make them make a good seal. Uh, and uh, so that when the rubber all butts up again, you, it makes a nice seal. It makes it all kind of, it's not Vaseline, but it's a little bit like that. It's a bit yeah. jellyfied. And so... You do all the rubbers with that, you know, uh, once they're dry and you will then all the roofs clean and dry, you do the rubbers. So they butt up nicely when it all closes. Um, most people won't know that cars got the drains as well. So uh, sometimes they're obvious, um, certain cars they're not. So take an Audi TT as an example. Um, if you can get your head between the headrests at the back and look back on yourself and look into the corners... Uh, so in other words, you're sort of, okay, so you're on the back seat, you've got your knees on the seat, you're poking your head between the rear headrest now, and your, your, your hair's stuck on the actual glass, if you like, and then if you look left and right, 
then you're looking at this fictitious partial shelf, shall we say, and in the corner, back on your shelf, so in other words, if you had a boomerang, it'd be at the tips of the boomerang, you've got little trays that collect the water. So if from a want of a better way, if you're now standing on the outside of the car, you see the water run down the roof, but then it goes round that boomerang, and then you don't see where it goes. It's not running down the wings next to your door handles. What's actually happening is that little bit of water is running round and then going into these little drains that you don't see. And if you get inside, you'll see the drains, and those drains get blocked, and then water does get in the car. So you get all tucked in there, um, you know, green and all the rest of it, yeah. bits and pieces. So you, you need to clean them. Um, usually a bit of a blockage might occur, occur on them because it's crud. Um, what we do is you can get um, a trumpet cleaner. There's like a... Uh, in other ways, you know the cat, the you know the neck curtains. You've got these things that go hold the neck curtains. Uh, that's what a trumpet cleaner's like. It's like one of those, and you can poke that down. So, um, and also what we do is once you've cleaned it and you can pour water down it, um, we then pour some drain cleaner down it. Uh, when I say drain cleaner, I'm talking about one like a mist, mist, Mister Muscle. One is one we use, believe it or not, because it's like a gel. And you can gently put a bit into that and let it run through and then rinse it through a bit more, rinse it through so that you can see that water runs through and it usually comes out the, out the arch. So now, OK, so sometimes you can tilt the roof back and get to these drain areas when the roof is back. You can tick, you know, get in there. Yeah. But, so they're there. And in other cars, um, what do we have? Oh, the little some of these roofs with the hard roofs, if you're cleaning the rubbers and you've got a hard roof. Um, they have the little drains there so it might be on YouTube have a look and you'll see those drain areas and there's some people on there showing varying ways to clean theirs the little Mazda MX-5s have them and it's got a bit of a dog leg on those and some of them the, the mechanisms behind the seat and people don't even know so they're cleaning the roofs and, and over time that dirt's going into those little drain areas and then it just backs up and comes in the car so you need to be when you clean the roof you need to be aware that these things can need unblocking or you know you need to deal with that yeah so what we best advice is is to go into google or youtube and type in the model of your car and then look for the where the areas are for the drain and then find yeah. where they are and yeah yeah and most gary's, people are there all gary's explain pretty much what to do so. yeah so you make sure they're clear uh and uh you know they're free running and then that all helps with part of maintaining your car and your roof and that might be why we started at the video at the beginning at the podcast video um which was talking about wet carpets because the uh, the audis fill up and uh you know if and that's you, something that you don't really want to have and no, it can be you, prevented no it's a no no yeah. yeah so we're gonna go moving on to uh now recoloring roofs and what about doing my roof in a different color so we'll sort of put those two together because they probably go hand in hand with each other so when we go to uh recoloring our roof what's your advice with that gary uh right okay so we keep the colors in stock um we've got the main ones the company that make the colors uh renovo i don't know anyone else who does it but uh great company makes some great products and uh, there's nothing wrong with the color we've had the chemist from renovo down actually because we had a few issues with it at the start but once they've explained to us how it works and how it has to be then we realised why it is why it why it is like it is. So let me explain that. You think in colour stroke dye, um, you know, you want to recolour it. So, you know, if you wanted to um, colour a garment, for example, you're putting dye in a washing machine or in the sink, and you know, like your hair, you'd put a dye in it, and you're thinking and imagine you'll do that with your roof, um, but that's not really how it works in reality because. Uh, it's not going to colour it if you just put dye in it. This product's made of like a nylon-y, uh, man-made material on the outside, this mohair-y, and then rubber underneath. So the, the colouring product is, is like a dye, but it's half dye, half paint, if you like. And uh, it has to be that way because it has to cover. You can't have what you might have as a canvasy looking object let's use a tent as an example or you know the, it's used on boats and that where you've got like a almost canvassy roof and uh you know it needs to cover 
uh, a few of the you know bruises that the, fa the fabric may have picked up so on a on a sort of a fluffy uh, on a fluffy um, mohair roof uh, you'd only really use it as a last resort because uh, you know and people often do it where they're cleaning it and it looks a bit grey and going back to what we talked about earlier your your polo shirt's gone a bit grey well the, the roof is different your roof is grey because it's dirty so you get your you know what people often do is clean it and then give it a real good clean think they've cleaned it dry it and then go on with the colour and you know we've you know we've we've had that with the you know the Renovo people and they've said they changed the instructions because they've said go back clean it and make a real good job of clean it because the mistake is that you know you you clean it and then you dry it and then you think oh it's a bit grey and I want it to look black and I go over it with the black and it looks all right from say 15 feet but when you get to five feet then it looks a bit half like it's almost been painted so you know it's not that it doesn't belong in the marketplace because it does you know we did a vintage car a few years ago and the roof would been on that car it was uh, one that was a film car you know and it was uh, the one that was out of the it was a sister car to the one that was in the um, aristocrats I think it was and uh, but anyway you know the roof was a, a, a it was bespoke. a cartoon car was it yeah <laughs> a bespoke <laughs> car a I'd bespoke like to see roof you that <laughs> well, we rubber out and start <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah, it. yeah, it's get a razor out, out and redid it. Yeah, yeah. car looks wonderful, sir. So nice and clean. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it has a place, and you know, we use it only when you need to use it, and that's very rare. Most of the time, you need to use it when it really isn't clean. You know, yeah. if you've it, when it's clean and you're happy, it's clean, but it needs revitalising. So you you're at the point where where you're deciding does it need a new one? You might say let's recolor it. The car might be 15 years old. It's only worth a thousand pounds, and so therefore, do you put a new roof on it? So we'll we'll come to the new roof bit. Now, you also mentioned about colouring it a different colour. Yes, we get a lot of calls from people talking about that. So you know, it's a whatever model, and uh, it, the roof's horrible. <laughs> it's green, you know, whatever, and it doesn't suit the car, and people want to change it. Well, the the honest answer to that is we tried it a few years ago. We had a beige roof. And the guy wanted it black. Sounds all right, doesn't it? Yeah, recolor it black. Give it a real proper clean so that the color gets a good bed. Because, of course, if it isn't clean properly, there's, that adds to the disaster when yeah. you're trying to go over stuff that's you dirty. Earlier, yeah. We've had lots in where people have gone over the dirt and it's a mess. I mean, you know, and we've even had people have to put a new roof on because it's just ruined because they've gone over it with the colour and then the dirt and everything. So go back to the beige roof and the roof is clean properly and it is dry and you've got a workshop and then you've got your colour there. So you give it the first coat of the colour and it looks like it would be if you coated a wall the first coat of any of you people are listening and you've painted a wall. Oh, your undercoat. Yeah, it looks a bit like a patchwork quilt. Yeah. <laughs> so then you put the second coat on, it starts to fill in the gaps and it starts to look lovely. And you're then thinking, ah, now it looks a bit like it's been painted and I probably could do with maybe a third coat. And by the time you put the third coat on and you've got a good coat of colour, and then it does look a bit like it's been painted because uh, you've had to put a lot on over the, you know, you've got three coats of it on there. So it doesn't work. To be honest, for me, it doesn't. It might work for somebody who only stands 15 feet away from their, from their car, never goes near it. I mean, you know, I'm joking, but, you know, the reality is it could work in a scenario like... Yeah, but you know, your, you, in your professional opinion, it doesn't really work. It, no, the way it's not going to look The, the right. way you think it would look or the way you think it would work doesn't actually give the results of... No, at the end so of you've got a blue roof and you want a black roof, you've got to go and get a blue roof, <laughs> buy another roof, yeah. or you've got to buy a car with the colour roof you want. You know, people are looking at new cars and they're seeing a car two or three years old, they're looking at their new car and they email us or they contact us. I've seen it, it's, I want one with a blue roof and this one's got a black one, can I recolour it? No, the answer to that is go buy one with a black roof yeah. or buy one with a blue roof and light blue. Start to learn to light blue. Um, you know, you can recolour maybe a little tiny bit, um, but we'll come to that on the replacement of the roofs in Which a minute. Look, yeah. 
So we're on the replacement. We're bit on now. the bit now, actually. We're on right? it. So, we're so, on so it. Let's, we're on it. that's a great segue so, in. So why, to, do people, why do people replace their roofs and how and how does that happen? So right. Okay. So um, in ev- most cities in this country, um, and some have got more than one, but most cities have got at least one place that you can go and get a new roof put on. Uh, some cities have got two or three places. Sometimes now there are even specialist roof places that only do roofs. So um, a trimmer will put a roof on and sometimes you can buy a pattern roof. There are companies out there that make pattern roofs and uh, you can buy the pattern roof and a, or a trimmer will buy the pattern roof and put it on for you. Or very rarely, but occasionally, you could have a bespoke roof made. But most of the time, because you're talking about neoprene, it has to seal, so it's not like a tent where you stitch together and expect it all to be waterproof. It stitches aren't waterproof. I mean, you need to imagine, I suppose, from a point of view of waterproof, is you need to be able to turn the car upside down and slowly lower it into a lake and then see if the stitches will hold the water or not. And that's kind of how you've got to think about it. So the reality is stitching patches and stitching bits into roofs doesn't really work. And that's why people do end up buying new roofs. So, uh, you know, you think, well, okay, so I've got a roof and you might be somebody on here now listening, thinking I need to repair my roof, right? Well, what tends to happen is that you, it goes where the roof folds. Most of the time, the roof's folding backwards and forwards like an umbrella going up and down. So where the grit and the dirt builds up in those cracks is where the roof concertinas and if it's got grit and dirt in it, attracted, it's going to weaken that crease. Yeah, that's where it goes. So, so what happens is, if you imagine where the back window joins, it's somewhere at the corner there, where that little drain is, often the other side of the drain is, then you'll get a little tiny split there. And um, that's when um, you think, oh, we're going to take it to someone who stitches it. And so in reality, you can't get a sewing machine up the side of a car. You know, you can't... What you're thinking is that somehow that's going to be stitched up. Well, you know, you can't get a needle and thread because every time the needle goes through, it's making a hole in it. So you can't stitch it up like you might stitch up a sail. If you see a guy stitching sails, you know, the old uh, the old fisherman sitting down with a big needle. They can't do that with a cabriolet roof because it effectively it's like, st- in, from a better way of explaining it, it's the same thing as stitching up a balloon you can't, yeah, you, can't, you can't stitch it up you know, cause, so so that then that means then that you go well okay so maybe, maybe we could patch it we'll cut a v-shaped piece of fabric stroke cabriolet then stick it on or you take the roof off and then put a sewing machine with the compressed sealant and you've got a flipping patch on it with a sewing machine. And to take a roof off is probably, somebody who's doing it all day long, certain roofs you might be able to get off in a couple of hours. Some people, some roofs, it might take you a day to remove, and usually a day and a half to put it back. Or if you've got an easy roof, Mazda MX-5, you might take on and off in half a day. But having, so, so then you've got the labour involved in taking that roof off, and then you've got to put a patchwork quilt to it. And the reality is, that's when you end up weighing up the cost of putting a new roof on. So then you think, well, how much is it going to be for a new roof? And I can tell you from experience that an MX-5 roof, uh, a reasonable one, they do the vinyl, of course, um, but uh, a, a fabric-y, mohair-y one, 500 quid maybe if you shop around. You've got to be careful not to buy the cheapest one. We all know that. Um, and then maybe up to... 800 quid to a grand for something like an MX-5. Then you get up to the Saabs at the other end of the spectrum, the Mercedes. Yeah, I was just going to say, because quite, I mean, a very common cabriolet is the A4, A5 cabriolets. You see a lot of them around. Yeah, the, um, the, yeah. so you can get one of those. I suppose they, a cabriolet from a roof replacement for a, a Mazda starts at maybe 350 to 500 quid. 500 quid will probably get you something half decent. And then you've got all the way to a Porsche or something else, which would be five grand, six grand maybe. And in between, you've got the Saabs might be a couple of grand maybe for a nice one. Pattern one we're talking, not a, not a dealership one. A dealership one might be a third more to, or twice the price. And then you've got the Audis and they're all somewhere in between. You've got the Fords and the Audis are yeah. somewhere in between. So an Audi, I think, is 1,200 quid, something like that. It depends on what model. So 
so there's uh, there's a reason why that so people replace them so why, why do you replace them why would you you know so what happens is you you, you don't realize that it's you're folding it backwards and forwards and it goes at that gap and then suddenly you've got you're facing the replacement and the reason you're facing the replacement is the car still a good car that's why people are putting them on. That's why in every city there is a place to put them on. Because you've got a car that might have done 60,000 or 80,000. And maybe only eight years old. And Yeah. And, uh, and you know, so what do we do? Trash the car or fill it up with water? Yeah. Yeah, so um, so what tends to happen get is... get rid of the car that you like. There's nothing wrong with it. And, uh, or, and well, so the and people, out there, the I mean, people out there are going to... You can advertise it and say, look, I've had enough. Needs a new roof or it needs fixing or something. But the reality is, what what happens is, is you know, you've got roof water coming in the roof. You think, oh, it's split there. I've noticed it split this little where it keeps folding. I can see that. And then you at the at the trimmers, you find out want roof repair or something. And then you go there, and then the trimmer looks at it and says, yeah, it's got to come off to repair it. And reality is, I'm never really going to be able to guarantee that repair. So, you know, then it's, you know, yeah. you, you've gone down that route. So then you've got your car that's a great car, you love it, and everything else. So you end up having to put a new roof on it. Mm. So, so how do you avoid that? Well, keeping it clean, I would imagine. Cleaning it and getting <laughs> the grit out of yeah. it. It's the grit bit area where it is. It's the same thing as your rubber mats or your mat carpet mats. They wear on a specific point. I can tell you if you open your door now and look at your pedals, below the pedals on the driver's side, it wears where your heel is, where you're going through the clutch or the throttle and your heel is grinding in. Now, it won't wear if you had uh, slippers and you you know those slippers were didn't have any grit or dirt on them. What's happening with your foot is that you've got the grit and dirt on your foot and as you're driving, it's dropping to your heel on the pedal it's dropping to your heel and then your heels grinding it in and sandy grinding it in to make a hole yeah. so have you got a gravel it stays there if one? you don't clean that and if you, you don't clean the it car, it's grinding so it you need to jet wash them and clean those regularly what, your shoes jet wash your shoes <laughs> before you get in the car, car. yeah absolutely. get yourself one of those you nice mats a, yeah. that you wipe your feet on before you climb save in save your fortune on interior carpet but but yeah but so for those people who've got a, a tarmac driveway you're probably not wearing out your mats for those who've got grit or grit at work, you know, the gravelly stuff, the sandy stuff, then obviously you're wearing out your mats. Now, so the, those people have got a gritty environment where the car lives, under a tree is a good example, then you're going to get that grit in the roof and you need to brush it out and clean it regular. So, uh, for, so okay, so now the roof's clean and you've got your reproof on it. Um, we do a two-year nano coating, by the way, which is a product you put on and it stays on for two years. Um, and then, uh, but there are other products out there that are maintenance products you can put on regular as and when it's needed. Sometimes there are out there that you do six months. I think the Autoglim and the uh, Renovo one I mentioned earlier, easy to do. Uh, clean it all, give it a brush, clean it if it's clean. A bit like a uh, you know mowing your lawn if the if the lawns you you know. And so you could bring a car to us and we'll do the dirty work, get the real ground in dirt off, and then you could do it yourself. Or you do a two-year one and then bring it back in two years and get the grit and dirt off it. But in the meantime, you wash it a bit similar to the way you'd wash the paintwork. You, you can get a brush. You can get a, 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 a reasonable brush and brush it and clean it and hose it to get the grit out in those particular areas. Um, the rubbers, ideally, um, if, you're, if the car's five or six years old, probably do the rubbers once a year as well. Yeah, you know, so that's the cleaning. Um, one one couple of things I just also wanted to add. Um, if you've got one of these back windows that's uh, made of plastic, uh, there's a couple of companies out there that make products for that plastic. I know that um, Diamond Bright make one, and uh, Renovo make one. Both very good products, almost like hand cream. It's a bit weird, really, like yeah. car polish. Car polish works. Um, do the inside and the outside with car polish. Use uh, a soft cloth, obviously, and uh, the more times you polish it inside and out, the cleaner it gets. So, and I find car polish, but you've got to clean to the edges with a microfiber and a clean cloth. Um, use a window spray, not the cream polish, just a window clean, you know, the, the blue stuff. Trigger spray on the inside to the corners, some on the outside, wipe it down. When you're polishing it with your car polish or your products, uh, there's one called Hindsight, Scottish guy does one called Hindsight, great product. Don't get it on the uh, fabric, 
So you just got to clean it like an inch from the edge. So put it an inch from the edge and accept that to do that edge, unless you're a professional, you're not going to be able to do it or just don't do it. Just clean it and clean it an inch to the edge. You'll be happy with it. You know, just make sure you clean it with the microfiber to the edge with the water, you know, the spray on clear stuff and the water on the outside. But then when you're doing the inside and the outside with your car polish, Autoglin make, uh, what's their polish called? Radiant is what it's called in the tray, but they do a super wax resin polish. That for the body works great for the um, for the uh, gl- for the plastic. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, you guys that are cleaning um, the glass, then it's cleaned as normal glass. Sometimes, by the way, if you can get the glass in a tilt position when the roof's moving up and down. You can clean the back window quite easily because some of these cars. You can't flip and get over there, you know, like the Audi TT again. You're trying to clean right in that corner, your elbow's stuck. You'd have to shout for someone to help you out, you know. Um, so sometimes the easy way is to tilt it to its clean mode and then it's tilted halfway up in the end. You can just lean over and clean the window. Yeah. So that works quite well. Uh, if you've got a sticker on the back window, be careful not when you gently get that off because people do it, the, the dealers tend to stick their dealer sticker on. And just be careful if you're going to remove that, that you don't damage the elements that to, to do the demisting. It's another no-no. It's another be careful. Uh, but people do it, and I see a few of those like that when you think, oh, this stupid old sticker's gone horrible, and then try and scrape it off. But you just got to be very careful. There must be somebody on YouTube shows you how to do it. It's another subject, but while you're doing all your roof and you're cleaning your rubbers and you're doing your drains and you're at it yeah. and you're making it all look lovely, and then you know, you make a you've said, mistake like that, and then you, yeah, you've, you, screwed up you've shouted your out another five minutes, 50 times, yeah. and you're well into the late afternoon and yeah. you've done it. Yeah, I'm joking because. Yes, it is a fair job to clean it from when it's really dirty. It's not that bad if it's re- if it's semi-clean. But as I said, 90% of you people that are listening right now will be staring at a roof that's green almost with the trees and everything else. And, uh, you know, um, part of the reason the roofs uh, need replacing is the fact that the green and all that is the beginning of the rotting process. Uh, and uh, I suppose another way of putting it is uh, if you were to... Uh, well, it's the breakdown of the material, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but uh, so just to sort of... So that people get it, because they don't realise it's happening in their own drive. You know, you've got a tree nearby or a hedge and the, the roof's getting a bit green. But let's just let's me and you take a roof off a car together, we'll, we'll unbolt it, and, um, and then we'll walk it across a ploughed field and find an old pond... You know, the sort of pond that you never see, but, you know, unless you're doing a rambling a thing. A stagnant pond. A stagnant pond. Dump it there. Not what we should do, but there are prams there. So right next yeah. to the pram that you found. And the old bikes. Or the, or the <laughs> supermarket trolley. <laughs> Horrible bloody pond. Don't yeah. even know why we have them. Yeah. But anyway, so you put your roof there and you leave it there and then we'll come back in two years and see what it looks like. And you will see that it's rotten. It will, you know, it will all be like a, like a rusty frame. Like a rotten roof. Like a rotten... <laughs> bloody pram yeah so you know so what's happening when you've got it parked there in your drive is that green and that stuff is rotting it and one more thing if you're one somebody who's thinking it won't matter to me and there are people that think oh well bloody hell it sounds like I'm a bloody light in the mirror I'll, <laughs> I won't bother I'll just clean the green bits and don't worry about it when you're selling your car which at some point you may then people are looking for ones with good roofs because ultimately, if you've got a receipt to prove that you've had it done and you've looked after it, or you've bought the kit and you can show that, I've got and you staple it in with your service history, this is the kit I use for my roof and advertise the car, very clean roof, good condition, somebody's going to want that car. That next owner is going to want one with a good roof. It's, it's hugely important because, you know, if they buy that car, well, that's the difference between buying a car and a cabriolet is the roof. <laughs> At well, the end of the day, that's what they're buying it for. Yes, yeah, but but you don't want to catch the cold. And, you know, what I mean by that is buy a car with a cabriolet roof that's looking a bit scruffy. You think, hang on, I'm going to own that two or three years. Am I going to have to replace that roof? Yeah. And, you know, obviously we're not silly, but when you're a second or third owner, you're looking at this dream Paul's box store or whatever it might well be. I don't want to be buying one that needs a new roof soon. So I'm going to look at the condition of that roof before I buy it. 
and that's most important. So you need to clean it and look after it because when you're advertising that car, you don't want to be saying, well, the roof's all right or whatever. You need to be advertising with a clean, nice, good condition roof because somebody doesn't want to buy it and in year two have to spend whatever it might be, most of them, between a grand and two grand to replace it. So, you know, it's most important that once you get it clean, you look after it. Put it in the garage, keep it under a carport if you can. Uh, car cover, people put covers over them in case you're thinking of that. That's all right in a storm, a couple of days maybe, uh, for whatever reason, building going on around you, you might put a cover over it. But don't be thinking that you're going to look after your roof by putting a cover over it and over the whole car and thinking that you do that for winter because you'll end up finding that underneath that cover you've got a whole new ball game it's it will be in an even worse mess yeah so there you go okay well so uh just before we finish we want to just touch on the do's and don'ts in relation to chemicals um and uh with the jet washing stuff so just briefly okay yeah the last briefly, bit really last do's and bit don'ts so don't be jet washing it too close don't let anyone else do that so, you know, talks about the bird's muck on it, jet wash it off gently, or your hose pipe will get bird's muck off. You know, we haven't all got jet washers. Wash it with a hose, a brush that's not too stiff. A reasonably stiff brush is okay. You know, even a nail brush is good. Is okay. So don't be too namby-pamby with it. Yeah. But at the same time, don't be scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing on a bird's muck mark for ages, trying to get that off and then rough it up, you know. Yeah. So there's a fine line. But, you know, you should be able to see what you're doing. So that's a do, uh, you know, bird's muck and all that sort of stuff. If you've got the uh, if you've got the Renovo stuff and you've had to get that bird's muck off and you've rinsed it off, put a bit more on a Renovo on it. Yeah, so just do that little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, now... It won't bead up forever, so when you're doing it, don't think because it's not beaded up that the stuff's come off. So you can um, still, you know, if you put a product on there like these maintenance products, like the Renovo and the Autoglim, the water-based ones, then, um, you know, you put it on every six months just because it's not beading up. The reason the beading doesn't happen, it might bead when you first put it on, but the reason it stops beading is the is the dust is settling into it so it's a it's measure of maybe you need to clean it but it will lose its water tension ability because the dust is coming into it so you know six months down the line you might wash it and clean it don't be putting color on it uh when you don't need to don't be trying to recolor it and uh you know make sure that if you are taking it to somebody take it to a professional do the rubbers, that's a definite do. Do the glass, know how to do the glass, remember that, cleaning it. If it's plastic, don't be folding those plastic roofs down, doing all the cleaning when it's freezing. So that's another don't. Um, the uh, those Anyone who's still got one of those Renaults, uh, they've got the plastic windows, I forget the model, but it's an early model now. Lovely car. Uh, but if you fold that roof, and just be very careful because they do start to become brittle. The only car I know that you can put the back window in, there are uh, companies that will do that, but there are a few that you see the zip in the back window and you think you can zip one in. You need to take it to a professional to put it in, but they do sell those plastic windows. Some companies will sell it separately. Um, if somebody's put a pen knife through it, then I'd suggest, uh, I don't know anyone who can do those kind of repairs, to be honest. It can be temporary. We can do something with some of those. If it was just a pen knife in one place, there is a way of repairing them. But uh, you're only talking about a repair that might last a year. So, you know, you could probably have it done every couple of year, every year, and then for a couple of years, it'll give the car a bit longer life. Uh, so do clean the grit out the gaps, and, uh, and you know look after the roof uh, the same way as you look after the rest of the car you know try and look after it yeah great okay well look we're virtually up to the hour mark now so uh, I just want to thank Gary again for imparting his wealth of knowledge in a specific field when it comes to car care and uh, obviously it's been great having you here mate uh, so just before we leave maybe you want to inform anybody that's listening uh, where they can find you what your website is and what information you have on your website that could help them uh, watch the videos, that will show you a bit more about what we've been talking about. The videos aren't giving you, giving you everything, so, you know, if you've got a friend who's talking about it and you go, yeah, 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 just probably this podcast will be a good start if they've got a lovely car. You know, there are people out there that want to look after their cars and they don't know this stuff, you know, yeah. they don't know about the drains, so 
this would be a good place to for the knowledge um, from a point of view of finding a company do your due diligence uh, you can look on our website um, we're on newagain.co.uk you'll see at the title it's cars.net so but you know just type in new again um, we're based in the southeast in the middle of Chelmsford uh, we can turn a roof round in a day so if you wanted to get up one morning and spend the day in Chelmsford if you're a long way away people do they come to us and drop the car off first thing in the morning on a Saturday most of the time in the in the summer months of the year we can get it done by two o'clock when we close but otherwise take a day off spend the, the day week. down in sunny Chelmsford have a look around Chelmsford there's, there's been plenty of museums there's a lot to see so it wouldn't be a, it be a wasted day it's, it's a very historical town it's a nice place to yes, be yeah so you can have in a, the top ten of good places to live there's a park and stuff Oh, so, a park. There's a lovely, there's a lovely park. park. There's, there's a lovely park. I, I like love it. the park. Do you know? It's, Dear. it's a fantastic park. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so they can visit you on newagain.co.uk and watch your videos there. And you're based in the centre of Chelmsford near the train station. Quite not far from the train station. So if you're a long way away, and people do this, funny enough, if you're, let's say you're in, uh, I don't know, in the middle of the country, uh, you can drive down to us. You can dump your car with us and then get on the train and go to the city. Save the parking, save all the aggro, do your yeah, overnight right. only 40 minutes away. We do quite a lot of those. Because you see, if you're in, I don't know, let's say you're Northampton or, or Bedford or you know Birmingham or anywhere north of there, you want to head all the way down to London. You don't necessarily want to do London and do the Science Museum and then go back in a day. So people do the overnight stays. You can do a, a weekend break thing, stay in London or stay in Chelmsford. We've got a hotel uh, right, right next, next door, door yeah. which is the Atlantic. It's a great hotel. Um, or you go, you come to us, you go stay in London, take on the show, and then stay somewhere in London or, as I say, next door. Yeah, well, they and then your back, car's man. with us. It's safe. You don't have to worry about parking. Yeah. You can leave it with us, come back. You don't even have to do the roof. You can do the roof and or anything else we do. So you can have your car made like new and then... Do the uh, roof the next day and that's two days up the city. Yeah, and then and then uh, drive down, drive home with the roof down. Why so, not? So, take the coastal so, route. <laughs> get down to... <laughs> Okay. Get down to the beach get in it, you know. Get your old sunglasses on, you know. It sounds like a recipe for Suddenly a fantastic romantic Head off to Miami. For a romantic weekend, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Gray, thanks ever so much then for joining us and thanks for imparting again your knowledge. So, this has been uh, the uh, New Again Car Care podcast. I've been your host, Stephen Jakes. Uh, this has been episode four on cabriolets and uh, and convertible roofs. Uh, Gary, would you like to say goodbye to your listeners? Yeah, thank you very much for listening. They're probably all asleep by now. Yeah, <laughs> like me. <laughs> Ready to bed. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for joining us and we'll see you and speak to you. We won't see you. We'll speak to you on the next episode of the podcast. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>